What's good, Faithful? You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. No matter where you're watching or how you're watching, thank you so much for making today's show a part of your day. As for what we're talking about on the docket for today's episode, 49ers cut candidates heading into July training camp, which comes your way at the end of July. So we start off with Jimmy Garoppolo. Obviously now, he could either be traded, he could be cut. According to a lot of NFL executives out there, they do believe that Garoppolo is going to end up getting cut because the value in a trade for San Francisco isn't really there with him coming off that shoulder surgery and all of the quarterback movement that we've seen take place throughout this crazy offseason that I think has been the most monumental offseason that we've ever seen in the history of the NFL. Here are reasons why Jimmy Garoppolo could get cut. And with all these candidates, I'm going to list reasons for why it makes sense for the Niners to let them go. And they're going to have a lot of tough roster decisions to make when they cut down the team to 53 players going into the opening game of the regular season against the Chicago Bears in September because I think the depth on this team is really, really good. So for Garoppolo, why could he get cut? Entering the final year of his deal, he has that cap hit that we've talked about exhaustingly up to this point of $26.9 million, but the dead cap hit, if he does get let go, it's not going to cost the Niners all that much money. They only have to eat about a million and a half dollars, and all signs point to Trey Lance starting. So are you willing to pay nearly $27 million for a backup? Now, if Lance struggles throughout training camp, and it doesn't look as though he can be the starting quarterback, then it might make sense to bring Garoppolo back because he's won 71% of his starts. Two NFC title games over the span of three years. This guy is tough as nails, and he's respected by the coaching staff as well as in the locker room. But I do expect Jimmy Garoppolo to either get traded, but I think the more realistic option is that he gets cut, and for him, might be the best-case scenario because then he can choose his next destination going into the final year of his contract. So I want you to look into your crystal balls right now. And I want you to predict, uh, predict what happens with Jimmy Garoppolo. Is it T for trade, C for cut, K for keep? What do you think the future of Garoppolo is in San Francisco? Cut candidate number two. We go to the defensive side of the ball. Diamador Lenore, the second-year player who last year had a nice little preseason coming out of Oregon. First couple of games, he got a lot of time. And then after that, really didn't make a lot of contributions on this roster, and it was Ambry Thomas, the other rookie defensive back, who was getting a lot of the snaps at the end of the year and flourished in getting those playing time. Dead cap hit for Diamador Lenore, $213,000 and some change. Lenore, why he could get cut, wasn't great in OTAs and minicamp. Now, I will say this about Demo. He thrives on contact. He is a physical defensive back. He has the size in terms of his height and the length with his arms that allows him to play pretty well in press coverage. But also, if he doesn't continue to play well, the 49ers did draft two cornerbacks in Samuel Womack and Tariq Castro-Fields. They signed a number one in Charvarius Ward. Emmanuel Mosley didn't give up a touchdown in coverage last year. They brought back Jason Verrett, who might be able to unseat and beat out the Amador Lenore in a training camp battle. And because you don't have to eat all that much money for a late-round pick... It might make sense to let him go. He is a potential Niners cut candidate in training camp. Name a player who you have been disappointed in. I want to see what you all come up with in the comment section right now because some might be a little bit disappointed with the Amador Lenore. Is it a guy like Trey Sermon who we're about to talk about? Let me know in the comment section right now. Speaking of Trey Sermon, Third round pick out of Ohio State in the 2021 NFL Draft, and he rarely played last year. Instead, it was the other running back who was taken, and Elijah Mitchell, who was top 10 in rushing yards per game among all backs last year. Why would Trey Sermon get cut, and why could he get cut? Didn't crash last year, really struggled. He had one elite year of college production. It was his final year at Ohio State after transferring to the Buckeyes from Oklahoma. The Niners have a really deep backfield right now going into training camp, led by Elijah Mitchell, Ty Davis Price they drafted in the third round, Jamichael Hasty, and Jeff Wilson. They also really seem to like Jordan Mason, the rookie undrafted free agent coming out of Georgia Tech. So with that, they have a lot of op options at that running back spot. And does the drafting of Ty Davis Price. Make Trey Sermon somewhat expendable, and would it allow the Niners to move on from him with little ripple effects? If he has a bad camp, it's not good for Trey Sermon. 
there was certainly pressure on him going into training camp this year. Which NBA team do you root for? Now you're watching right now as a big football fan, as a fan of the 49ers, and you're probably like, why are you asking me what NBA team you root for? Maybe it's the champion Golden State Warriors. If it's another team, let me know in the comment section and show us some love. The reason I'm asking you this is because myself and Harrison Graham are going to be leading our NBA draft coverage on Thursday. We're going to be going live two hours before the draft officially starts on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. Every single year, we're the most watched draft coverage on YouTube. We're trying to run it back. We're trying to do it again because on the 49ers report, we do it like we do on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, and we kill the game. So make sure you subscribe and join us. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. We'll see you on Thursday. I hope all of you tune in. Final cut candidate for San Francisco. We go to the edge rusher spot where San Francisco is really, really deep. And we have to once again talk about Samson Ebucom. So he has a cap hit of eight plus million dollars. That's interesting because if he's on the team, that's the cap hit. If you end up letting him go though, he has a dead cap hit of less than $2 million. And you can afford to move on from Samson Ebucom because you save yourself that much money, nearly $7 million. You have a stacked defensive line. The 49ers addressed edge in free agency by going after Kamoko Ture, as well as Kerry Hyder. And then you also look at what they did in the draft with a player like Drake Jackson. They addressed edge in the offseason as a whole, and Samson Ebucom is going into the final year of his contract. So you don't have to eat all that much money for Ebucom if you move off of him. So, Coop, we'll look at the 49ers cut candidates here. Then I want to take a look at some of Drake Jackson's numbers that we already have in the chamber. Cut candidates for the Niners. Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback, Diamandur Lenore, cornerback, Trey Sermon at running back, and then Samson Ebicom at that edge rusher spot. Imagine if Drake Jackson plays really well throughout training camp and in the preseason. Then you're looking at a somewhat expensive rookie second round pick and another expensive player at that edge spot in Samson Ebicom. You have to cut and save some money somewhere, and it could come by the way of letting go of Ebicom. So for Drake Jackson, at USC last year, six sacks, 17 hurries, eight tackles for loss, and one forced fumble. His pro football focus stats were even better analytically than what the numbers look like from just the raw stats. Pass rush grade, 88.3. His pass set pass rush grade, 82.5. And, and then his win rate, nearly 20%. On the scale of elite numbers among all pass rushers in college football a year ago, Drake Jackson and all those numbers here to my right, all in the category of elite. And Kyle Shanahan said, Drake Jackson, I think he can be one of the best edge rushers out of this 2022 NFL draft class. He said, we watch tape on about nine or 10 edge rushers before we got to Drake Jackson. We didn't watch him until ninth or 10th because he was slotted as going after some of those other players. But we like him the most. Now, of course, you draft the guy and you're like, yeah, we're going to heap praise upon him because he's one of our draft selections. But I think that Drake Jackson can become a really good player. He's in a system that allows defensive linemen and edge rushers to flourish. He's also playing on the other side of Nick Bosa. So many double teams are going to go his way, opening up one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Drake Jackson to pin his ears back, play an aggressive brand of football as a rookie, which I think is really important, and get after the quarterback. And you look at his win rate at nearly 20%, which is really good. His pass rush grade, if he has one-on-one -on -one coverage coming off the edge, it's really good news for Drake Jackson. The ability is certainly there. So what do you think? I just listed four guys who could get cut on this 49ers roster. Which surprise cuts could happen on this team? Let me know in the comment section. Also want to give you all thanks for helping us get past 60,000 subscribers. I took over last April for Thomas Mott on the 49ers report. We had about 33,000 subscribers. So that's nearly 30,000 new subscribers in almost a calendar year and change. Really appreciate all of the support. We've been able to grow like this because we push out videos every single day. News, rumors, free agency, NFL draft, our watch parties last year. It's the first time that we did them. Some games, we had more than 100,000 people join us. We're running it back this year as well, where I give you some play-by-play, -play, and we have an absolute blast right here on the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, do so right now. For those of you who helped us get to 60,000 subscribers, my humble thanks to all of you for supporting the show.